In this video we're going to take a look at DNS and in particular we're going to look at DNS zones and, and DNS zone files and we're going to cover uh, what is DNS, what's a domain, uh, what is a, a DNS zone, what's a, a zone file, how zone files relate to or how zones relate to domains, the different zone types and how zone transfer works. So what is DNS? Well it consists of two components, it, con it consists of a structure and a system and it was designed to organize and find IP addresses of computers on very large distributed networks. Now before we had the domain name system, computer names and IP addresses were mapped using a flat list and stored in a simple text file uh, called the host file. Now the important thing to remember about this, the host file was maintained on each computer so every computer had its own host file and this is what the host file looks like. It's just just a simple mapping of IP address to to name. Now, in the early days of the host file, the the names didn't have a structure, so it wouldn't be called rhino.acme.com. That's a DNS structure. It would probably just be called Rhino. Now, as the network size is increased, this approach, the host file approach, was impractical, and practical because it needed to be stored on each computer it was a simple text file and then no structure which meant you had to start at the top and work your way to the bottom so it could take a long time difficult to manage updates because you'd have to update all the host files on all of the computers when you made a change and to overcome these limitations the DNS system was developed so DNS essentially provides a way to organize the names which is the domain name structure it also provides protocols, services, methods for storing, updating and retrieving IP addresses for host computers and that is the actual DNS system. So we've got the structure and we've got the system. Now from the perspective of an end user you can actually consider the DNS system as a structured host file. Now the main criteria, design criteria when uh, DNS was designed was it needed to be expandable because everything was increasing so you need to be able to add more and more computers it needed to be distributed which means it wasn't located on a single computer it could be located on lots of different computers it needed to be resilient which means you had to have a copy so if one one server was down then you still had a copy of the information and it needed to have delegated authority it means you didn't have one administrator uh, which would be impossible to administer all the names and IP addresses so you had to be able to delegate authority to administer the IP addresses. Now probably the best way of trying to understand something is actually trying to design it so we're going to design DNS but instead of DNS we're actually going to use a football team analogy so what we're going to do is we're going to design a system for managing uh, team players and their team phone numbers so we're going to imagine that we've organized a football league and we've got various teams in, the, in that league and those teams have got players and those players have got phone numbers so we're going to need to contact those players at some time to tell them they're playing or they're not playing and where they're playing so that's what we're going to design so we're going to start off with a very simple three team uh, football league so we've got team A, team B and team C and these teams have got players and I've got one here Steve and there's his phone number so what we want to be able to do is ask someone uh, about Steve and they're going to be able to give us his phone number and that's basically the same what happens with DNS you give them the domain name and you get back an IP address so this time we're going to give them a name we're going to get back a phone number the obvious way to organize it is in a simple flat list get a piece of paper and write the teams A, B and C and write the names of the players and the phone numbers on it like just like I've done here now this is the flat list and this is basically the old host file now as it expands the flat list becomes really unmanageable so what we're going to do is split them up into three lists so we're going to have a separate piece of paper for team A, a separate piece of paper for team B and a separate one for team C but the information is still the same the name and the phone number now when we add extra teams, team D, team E, team F, we just add an extra piece of paper and we put the phone numbers and the names on that. So we've got three lists but who manages the list so each team has a manager and we're going to let the manager handle the list for the for the team so 
here we are we're delegating authority just like one of the design criteria with DNS it's going to be managed by different administrators so we've got John managing team A, Fred managing team B and Jane manages uh, team C and we've got a league organizer Bill and he wants to know the phone number of Steve who plays for team A so how does he get it? Well he needs to know who has the player list for team A so Bill actually needs a list but he doesn't need a list of the players and their names what he needs his list of is the name and phone numbers of all the managers and here's that Bill and here's his list so he's got a list of John with his phone number Fred with his phone number and Jane with her phone number so Bill needs to contact one of the managers so if someone wants to find the, find the phone number of Steve on team A they contact Bill this is the entry point here and Bill contacts John and John has got the name and phone number of Steve so he passes that back to Bill who passes it back to the person who's inquiring now if we compare um, our analogy to DNS and IP addresses and domain names then you can say Steve corresponds to a web server that's what you're trying to find the IP address of the phone number corresponds to the IP address the teams we got team A that corresponds to a domain name because that's the administrative grouping Bill John Fred Jane they're the managers they correspond to the name servers and the list themselves the actual pieces of paper uh, are zones or zone files because they're stored in an actual file rather than on a piece of paper you should notice that Bill doesn't have a list of players but he has a list of managers and you should also notice that Bill needs to know who has the team list for all the teams below him so it works from the top to the bottom but John who's below Bill only needs to know the phone numbers of the top of the tree he doesn't need to know anything else so in DNS it actually works from the top to the bottom when you traverse DNS you traverse it from the top to the bottom you can't go from the bottom to the top now primary zones and uh, secondary zones and zone transfers back to our analogy here uh, what happens if one of the managers goes on holiday so what happens if John goes on holiday well all John needs to do is take a photocopy of the list and give it to someone else and they can actually stand in for them while they're away so let's imagine he gives it to Barry now he also needs to tell Bill because Bill needs to know he doesn't have to contact John he has to contact Barry and so in the diagram on the next page I've modified Bill's list to include Barry and we also need to add a note in John's list to include Barry because he needs to send him the list and the list updates so if we go back to our analogy we've got Bill here he's got an entry in here for Barry because he needs to know Barry's got the list as well as John and there's team A there's team A they're identical lists because John's made a copy and given it to Barry the analogy here is the the list that the photocopied list is a, on DNS this is called a zone transfer it's actually a file copy from one name server to another name server and it always happens from the master copy now because John was the first manager he has the master list and the list is always updated on the master so Barry's list is just a copy Barry doesn't actually make changes to the list himself John makes the changes and then transfers them over to Barry and say on DNS this process is called zone transfer but it is basically a file copy so just to fill in a few terms here the a zone can be a primary or a secondary or it used to be called a master or a slave so a master zone is actually a primary zone and a slave zone is a a secondary zone the master zone contains the master record and that's the one that gets updated the slave zone or the secondary zone is a copy and it is updated by the master in a process which is called zone transfer now domains and zones a domain is a logical division of the DNS namespace it's an area of administration the domain administrator can create and edit records on that domain the records themselves are stored in a file called the the zone file and the most common question is why isn't it called the domain file but it's not called a domain file because there isn't necessarily a one-to-one -one mapping between a domain and a zone but generally speaking there is but there doesn't have to be so if we actually look at the DNS structure now 
Uh, we start at the top with a dot, it's hierarchical, which makes it expandable. The next level is the what we call the first level, and we I've just put the, the dot com here, but we've got dot net, dot edu, dot org, and we've also got the countries, dot cu, dot de, etc., all sitting at this level here. These are the first level domains. Underneath that, we've got the second level domains. I've called labeled them domain one, domain two, but here we'll see Microsoft, IBM, uh, Google, etc. And underneath those, we got subdomains, and any domain can have a subdomain. So this is a subdomain of this domain. This domain is a subdomain of this domain. Now I've collected them here into zones. You see here, I've called that zone one and I've called that zone 2 and that one zone 3. Now a zone has to consist of a domain. You can't have half a domain, you have to have a complete domain. And it can consist of multiple domains here. We've got a zone 2 consists of two subdomains and a zone 1 consists of several domains and a zone 3 consists of uh, a single subdomain. Being able to split them up into, into zones means that I can actually uh, store those zones on separate servers and the reason you want to do that is if your domain was very large so you'd want to split it up. Now these zones correspond to our list what we saw in the analogy and instead of being stored on a piece of paper and held by a person they're stored in a file and they're held on a, a server called a name server a domain name server and they're copied from server to server in a process what we call zone transfer and the copy works from the master copy to the slave copy or from the primary to the secondary and you can have multiple secondaries so even though I've only uh, illustrated with a single secondary I said um, John gave a copy to Barry John could give a copy to several people for redundancy so that brings us to the end of the video. I hope DNS and DNS zones makes a bit more sense to you now. Uh, if you've got any comments on the video, then please leave them below. If you like the video, then there's a like button below. And if you want to get notified when I publish other videos, you can always subscribe to this channel. And if you use social media and want to share it on social media, then feel free. And until next time, goodbye.